Okay, welcome to the second day of Complex Dynamics in the Tropics. Um, the first talk will be by Misha Lubitsch. He'll speak on mirrors of conformal dynamics. Thank you. <clears throat> and thanks to the organizers, so for uh, making this night a nice, very nice event. So big pleasure to be back here, actually. I was in real like three weeks ago, so I'm now just going back and forth <laughs> every other week. Uh, um, so, well, and congratulations to Karstan. So, yes, yeah, usually people compete for the honor to know uh, their uh, birthday boy for as long as possible, so for the longest time. I think that in this situation, only two people maybe in the room can compete with me. It's like Mitsu and Sean, so. And, Others are way too young, so I have known Karsten for more than 30 years. We met, I think, in 1990 in Paris and Lyon. So, yeah, and at that time it was a kind of a big conference in dynamics when calomorphic dynamics was little part of it. And those days it was difficult to imagine it's just a conference with 100 people in attendance, so somehow dedicated solely to holomorphic dynamics. So just the field was young. Carson was young as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, well, it's great that so many young people are getting involved. And by young, I mean from age zero to 61. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay, let us go to mathematics. So it is uh, the, uh, the, here is the title, Mirrors of Conformal Dynamics, and there, are, there will be several themes which I will try to put together in this talk. Uh, so <clears throat> it will be around anti-holomorphic dynamics. Mostly I will be talking about uh, anti-holomorphic rather than holomorphic maps, and somehow this context turned out to be uh, in some ways, some ways better than holomorphic contents that most of us have been doing for life. Mm -mm. So we will discuss the tricon, the anti-holomorphic uh, <coughs> uh, counterpart of the Mandelbrot set. We will discuss uh, Kleinian groups generated by reflections. So just <coughs> kissing, uh, circle kissing groups. And we will discuss correspondences algebraic correspondences, but they will be holomorphic in one variable, anti-holomorphic in the other variable. And all these themes will be unified by the idea, by the notion of Schwarz reflections. And it is quite new. So all other topics of, have been around and have been discussed in holomorphic, mostly in holomorphic setting. So, but uh, Schwarz reflections, I don't think that they uh, had been discussed until recently. So this area started to emerge like five years ago, five, six years ago, and now it is quite, quite a big area with at least 10 people actively working on it. And I will just try to make an overview of the work that has been done by these people, so like Nick Makarov and Sada, who is here and who is the most active participant of this direction. <clears throat> OK, so here is a sort of some uh, detailization of the themes that we would like to discuss. So it is known to everybody in the room for two Sullivan dictionary, but again, now it will be in the anti-holomorphic context. So the groups will be generated by reflection groups, and the maps will be, rather than rational maps, will be anti-rational maps, so rational maps of Z-bar. Uh -uh. And as I told you, that the main theme, the main theme will be the dynamics generated by Schwarz reflections. So uh, Schwarz reflection in so-called quadrature domains. So the quadrature domains is a notion which emerged in analysis and maybe computer science and uh, in some mathematical physics. So it, it had been familiar notion, but only recently people started to look at it from the dynamical point of view, started to iterate this kind of maps. It was Nick Makarov and Song Li, who started to do it first. And they started to produce very nice pictures and making some very interesting guesses, as they called it, so rather than conjectures. 
So, and uh, about five years ago, I visited Nick Makarov in Caltech, and he showed me these pictures and thought about the gases, so how these pictures are related to the tricon, might be related to the tricon. And at that time, Sabi actually joined, joined the Stony Brook, so us in Stony Brook, and uh, so we looked at these pictures and we very quickly realized, quite quickly realized that somehow we are in a good position to uh, justify some of these guesses by Lee and Nick. And that is how this work started. And now, as you see, the many more people are getting involved, and it is really quite in fresh, new direction of research, so <clears throat> I would say. Uh, um, okay, so in particular, what comes very naturally in this, uh, from this point of view is uh, various matings be between groups and maps. So matings between groups and maps are often naturally realized as dynamic generated by Schwarz reflections. So we heard about the, the uh, sort of the idea of the matings from Sean Stoke yesterday. So first, uh, this kind of phenomenon was discovered in the holomorphic setting by Sean and Chris Penrose, who both, both are here. It was in the mid-90s, I think. So. But uh, kind of it was, uh, for all these years, it has been very beautiful, but kind of isolated class of examples. It was difficult to produce plenty of examples of this time. In this Schwarz reflection anti-holomorphic context, they are just plentiful of them. They just come, come from, Nova, from all so pouring from all sides, so it's, you will see that just uh, there is no big effort to produce this kind, this kind of example. Example. So <clears throat> it is some kind of new flavor, new flavor from to the uh, bullet and Penrose discovery. <clears throat> and uh, also, these examples can be produced uh, just independently of Schwarz reflections. Without knowing Schwarz reflections, we could come up with this idea just by doing surgery between maps, specific surgery between maps and groups. Sometimes it is possible to do in a quasi-conformal way, but often it is impossible. Uh, and uh, in this case, the weed surgery comes to rescue, sometimes at least. And that will be another theme. So I will show you how the weed surgery can be used to produce plentiful of such examples in a regular way. <clears throat> and finally, algebraic correspondences. That is bullet and Penrose uh, topic. So the, the mating, uh, mating examples appeared in the framework of correspondences. They started from correspondences and extracted the group on one part of the dynamical plane and a map on the other part of the dynamical plane. Here, somehow, it is going in, the, some, in, in a different direction. So you first can produce the Schwarz dynamics, and then you can lift it to the dynamics generated by correspondence. But again, these correspondences, a sort of anti-holomorphic version of bullet in rows correspondences, are there. <clears throat> OK, so that will be our themes that I will uh, try to outline and to give you some idea, uh, basically, on example. On examples, I will not uh, develop any general theory, but will show you several examples how this kind of phenomena emerges in a natural way. And the first very simple example, but somehow which already uh, shows all the above features, all the above features are already there, it is the deltoid example. So the deltoid is this triangle, kind of ideal triangle that we see on the picture, well, classical classical object, mm. so, and it turns out that uh, its complement is a quadrature domain, so, which I have not yet defined for you, but let me say uh, the definition in this context. So, just there is an anti-holomorphic reflection near, as well, it is analytic arc. So, it is analytic arc, the boundary of our deltoid. So, by the Schwartz, you know, by the Schwartz principle, there is an anti-holomorphic reflection fixing all the points of this arc. But in this case, what happens is that this reflection extends to the anti-meromorphic map on the whole complement of the deltoid, including infinity. So, somehow the complement of the deltoid becomes a, a quadrature domain in the sense that there is an anti-meromorphic, global anti-meromorphic, well, global, semi-global anti-meromorphic map in this complement, which is just a classical Schwarz reflection on the boundary 
of the deltoid. So we have some map to iterate. This map is not branch cover and does not have an even degree. The degree changes. It is actually degree two on the over the complement of the deltoid and degree three over the deltoid. So the degree changes. It is a kind of interesting subtlety of this dynamical system. And so what will happen if we start to we start to iterate our map by just taking pullbacks of our deltoid, of our triangle. We take it and we take and reflect it three times, so over three sides. So we obtain three triangles attached to the deltoid. Then for each of these triangles, we can do reflections with respect to these two sides of each of these rectangles. And we obtain so two rectangles, two triangles, two triangles attached to the previous to the previous three triangles, to the each of previous three triangles, etc. We keep doing that, and so if you produce a picture, so that is the picture produced first by Lee and, Mac and Nick Makarov, I think, of the, what you obtain as the limit of this procedure. So you see this tiling of the certain domain, of certain cauliflower domain by triangles, and so the boundary is, looks quite, quite familiar for, for us. So it definitely looks like a, like, like a cauliflower. So it's a beautiful, beautiful picture. By the way, so I will show you many beautiful pictures. None of them are produced by me. So it is produced by Lee and Nick or by Sabia. So, but I am not responsible for any of them. <coughs> uh -uh. Okay, so here is a picture. So how to understand, how one can understand what is going on here. So if you take, if you take the sort of the interior, the domain bounded by this cauliflower and uniformize it by the unit disk, then we will see kind of dynamics, which is, we will see a tessellation, which is a very familiar triangle group tessellation of the hyperbolic plane of the unit disk. So it looks like here we have an action of the triangle group. So, of the group generated by the reflection in the sides of the ideal triangle inside of the inside of the cauliflower. On the other hand, if we uniformize the exterior of the cauliflower, then it turns out, and it is easy to guess that, so the degree is two, there is a super attracting point at infinity, it is anti-holomorphic map, there are no other critical points inside. So it's got to be this Z bar squared outside. So, yes, some question? Yes. What is it if we're reflecting? Uh, sorry. So what, what are we reflecting? So what is reflection so the map, the map is defined in the complement of the, this triangle. In the whole complement of this triangle, and this map locally near the sides of the triangle, of this deltoid, it is just the usual Schwarz reflection. Schwarz reflection with respect to an analytic arc. So Schwarz reflection is a, there's a map and there's a arc. And then you reflect. Yes, you reflect, yes. And you reflect the image. What is the map, the original map? That's what I was asking. So the original map is not here. It is not written. So it is not written. But I'm claiming that there is this figure called deltoid, which I did not describe precisely, but it is a classical figure, and which I will tell you more precisely what it is. So, and I will define you more precisely what is, what is the map, but I claim that, so for this figure, for this classical deltoid, there is an anti-miramorphic map, so miramorphic map of Z bar in the whole complement of deltoid, such that on the boundary of the deltoid, on the boundary of this triangle, it is just identical map. That is our map that we interact. And then we start to reflect, etc. And after reflections, when we after reflections, we obtain this cauliflower tiled with triangles. And outside of the cauliflower, we obtain a dynamics which is after uniformization becomes just z bar squared. Becomes z bar squared. Yes. I, I, thought that, sorry, I thought that if you take that deltoid in that circle you, you, and you do repeat reflection, you get that bound, round boundary circle. How can you get both? So. Those are circle arcs. The other one is an algebraic arc. Which, oh, the first one, oh, the first one was not circular. Oh, when you said deltoid. 
it is deltoid. It is deltoid, yes. You mean like the deltoid? Yeah, it is the deltoid, yes. Ah, ah, sorry. Okay. So why is the deltoid? That's given by Okay. It is some algebraic curve, oh, yeah. Okay. It is some algebraic curve. And you will see the precise definition just on this yeah, two slides down. Like no, no, no. It is the deltoid. It's very particular curve. Very particular algebraic curve. Uh -uh. Okay. Well, I guess I, I would like you to make sense of this picture because it is the model. Even if you don't understand everything, it models everything. You don't need to know anything else. So that, is, <laughs> that is the model <laughs> for everything that will be, will be taught. Well, so, yes, so we somehow, at the moment, we should just recognize this, this, this tessellation looks like the tessellation for the modular group. And actually, it can be justified exactly that if you so uniformize this cauliflower by the disk so that the deltoid goes as the ideal triangle, then we will obtain the tessellation for the modular group. So, <coughs> for the modular group. So, and it, uh, obviously, so we should recognize this as a mating of a, we want to recognize this as a mating of a group and a map. So Z bar squared and the triangle modular group are obviously mated on this picture. Mm -mm. Okay, so uh, how to understand this mating dynamically? Uh, so what does it mean to mate the group and the map? And there is a certain map associated to a group. So we call this map Nielsen map, so some people call it like bone series map. So some induced map, piecewise Möbius map, which is associated to the group. So we have here a triangle group, and we can take a map, which is just reflection on this side. It is reflection on, on, on this part of the disk. It's reflection in this side of the triangle. On this part of the disk, it's reflection of that side of the triangle. And on that, it is reflection on the other side of the triangle. So just we have the ideal triangle, and we reflect, we consider the piecewise Möbius map, which is reflection in these three sides. And this map, this Markov map, degree two Markov map, it captures the orbit structure of the group. It is equivalent to talk about this map and the group. So it captures everything. So we call this Nielsen map. And so this Nielsen map, if you iterate, it produces some tessellation Tessellation of the circle by the vertices of these triangles. And on the other hand, on this side, we have a tessellation, dyadic tessellation of the circles coming from the iteration of z bar squared. And we have some homeomorphism, so at least we, uh, uh, if, if the picture is really as nice as we depicted, so it is, if it is really a cauliflower, it is a Jordan curve, then there got to be some homeomorphism that conjugate this dynamics of the Nielsen map to the dynamics of, of z bar squared. And it is a very interesting homeomorphism, just, just, just a second, it's a very interesting homeomorphism, which we will call Minkowski homeomorphism, so so Minkowski homeomorphism. So, uh, or question mark, Minkowski question mark map, so it was discovered by Minkowski out of curiosity, I guess, which is the number theoretic map, which transports the ferry tree to the deadic tree. And the fairy tree comes from the action of the modular group. The deadic tree comes from the action of z bar squared. So it is kind of a relative of the Minkowski map. Yes, Lassen. So, so, so is Nielsen map fixes some sort of So the Nielsen map is not defined on the triangle. On the delta, it is not defined. It is, it is piecewise Möbius map, which is defined only in the three complementary components of the triangle. <clears throat> so formal welding, formal welding by Minkowski, yes. Formal welding by, by Minkowski map. But uh, so one of the questions is, so now we can ask ourselves whether we can reverse this situation. So the map is here. So we have the modular group action that we understand. We have Z bar squared action that we understand. We have Minkowski map that we understand should understand. Can we do this manual welding? Can we justify it? First of all, first observation is that no way to justify it with quasi conformal surgery. Because here we have all these parabolic points, these vertices of the triangle, it is parabolic points. 
for the uh, Nielsen map. And here we have all the hyperbolic points. We know that quasi-conformal maps don't, don't, cannot do that, cannot move parabolic to hyperbolics to hyperbolics. But there is another type of surgery, another type of extension. There is an extension of quasi-conformal maps, which is so-called David maps, which can move, can, can turn, can turn the repelling points into parabolic points. And it turns out that the inverse of this Minkowski map is actually the David map. One of our results is that the Minkowski map is actually the David map. So if we did not know the deltoid, did not know anything about that, we could just take this Minkowski map, justify that it is David, do the surgery, and that is the, the deltoid. So we could rediscover the deltoid in this way and the Schwarz reflection in that way. So it is a boundary map values of the Gidavit map, exactly. Yeah, but, that, but the, the boundary values of the Gidavit map, which isn't necessarily dynamical, a priori. So it is not at all dynamical, of course, because uh, you cannot do dynamical. It is the kind of surgery which, which goes back to the thesis of Kaczynski. Yeah. So when, when you can turn with the David surgery, you can turn hyperbolic guys to parabolic guys. But of course, you violate the dynam dynamics on the basins. Uh, um, yes, exactly. So on the boundary, it is dynamical. Outside, it is not. OK. So and uh, here is uh, a sort of summary of what I have said. Well, people know what is quasi-conformal surgery. I will not recall that. And David, it means that the Beltrami differential has exponentially small tails. So the area of the set where the dilatation is greater than k exponentially decays. So that is the David, and there is a classical already David theorem which tells that integrability is still holds in this generality. That you, we don't need bounded Beltrami differential. It's enough to have this David Beltrami differential with exponential uh, decay and tails, tails, and then then we can do perform surgery. Mm -mm. Uh, uh, and so uh, that is uh, one of our results with Russell Lodge and Sergei Mirenkov. So to show that this Minkowski map is actually David in the sense that it admits the David extension to the disk. So we need some criteria, we needed some criterion for the David extension. And this criterion was provided for us by Chen Chen He and Said, who is here. So there is some condition. So uh, on the in terms of the cross-ratio distortions, so how cross-ratio distortions uh, um, uh, can grow when you go to deep scales. So it's just a uh, very simple, very simple, well, uh, simply formulated conditions that we kind of verified, actually number theoretically first, we just use number theory to verify this condition for this Minkowski function and to, to check that indeed this Minkowski function is the bit or rather that inverse. Let us, let me emphasize that it is not symmetric. To be David is not symmetric property, so this direction is not David. It's the opposite direction. From hyperbolic to parabolic is David, from parabolic to hyperbolic is not. So, but, so it is enough for us to do surgery, it is enough for us to, to have one direction. Okay, and finally, let me mention the algebraic correspondences. So it also the theme that appears here, and it is related to another definition of the quadrature domains. <laughs> the quadrature domains is uh, the domains with the following property. Let us uniformize, in our situation, uniformize our quadrature domains, the complement of the deltoid with, well, it's just Riemann uniformization. So, and the domain is a quadrature domain when this Riemann uniformization is a rational function. So it, it meets a global extension to a rational function. So which in the case of the deltoid, it is just uniformization by this degree, degree three function. And if you want, that is our working definition of the deltoid. So what is the deltoid? Deltoid is you take this rational function, you take the unit circle, and the deltoid is the image of the unit circle by this rational function. And this function is univalent outside of the unit circle. And then, so what is our Schwarz reflection? Once we have such a picture, what is our Schwarz reflection? So we take a point, we take a point here, 
go by our univalent map to here, then reflect here, and then apply our rational map there. So that is the definition of Schwarz subtraction. Once we have this uh, uniformization to be a global function, then we can define, define the Schwarz reflection through this, through this diagram. Uh, um, and then what we can do, we can lift the above this picture of the cauliflower, cauliflower under the map F and obtain certain picture which also combines features of the group and features of the map. And it turns out that this picture can be extracted from this algebraic correspondence, which is holomorphic in W, anti-holomorphic in the I here, sorry for this notation, bad notation, but I here is just reflection in the unit circle. Just a standard familiar to us reflection in the unit circle. It's not imaginary unit. So, uh -uh. So what is this equation? What does this oh, equation? It is, it is just some algebraic, algebraic expression. So holomorphic in W, and then we just kill, kill some. It is just, we are killing some trivial solution. We are not interested in trivial solutions. Yeah, it cancels out, yeah. It is, well, so we don't want to this, uh, this trivial part to be inside of the, inside of the equation. <laughs> OK, so that is a picture that we will obtain, so when we cover the deltoid, the cauliflower picture, it will be threefold covered, so our map is of degree three. So, and you see here some the action, a sort of which, trans, which permutes these domains, it is deck transformations, which permutes these domains. Somehow this algebraic, this algebraic relation is generated, roughly speaking, by deck transformations of F, deck transformations of our uniform, uniformization, oops. Sorry, I'm going in the wrong direction. So yeah, so we have our map F, and we can see the deck, deck transformations of F, which are local transformations, of course. It's a, it, is, it is not the Galois covering. And we can see the reflection with respect to the, to the circle, and we generate everything uh, in this way. And so we will obtain this kind of picture, and so it will be partly tessellated, or, and partly there will be some uh, Ziba squared action. On this, on this region, on this yellow region, there will be Ziba squared action. On the colored region, there will be some group action. And the group will be actually the free product of Z2 and Z3, this kind of hacky type, hacky type group. So that is maybe the easiest occasion when this mating of the groups and maps, when this bullet in rows phenomenon, appears, and it is this deltoid situation. You see this really simple, simple situation which can be very specifically studied. Okay, that is our deltoid, which is the model for everything else. So let me show you some further examples. Further examples. <coughs> so the next example that we consider also showed to us by Makarov and Lee. It is the example that we call that we call CNC example, a circle and cardioid example. It is, uh, now we are dealing with two quadrature domains rather than one quadrature domain. So one of them is cardioid. It is ex exactly, actually, the main cardioid. The main cardioid of the Mandelbrot set, the canonical cardio, is a quadrature domain. All of us know that it is uniformized by the inverse of the multiplier, which is a quadratic map, the global rational map. So the cardioid, it is just our favorite cardioid. So, and the other quadrature domain is the complement of the disk. So, and we generate the dynamics, generate dynamics yeah, by the reflections in the cardioid and reflections, just a classical reflection in the circle. Let us generate and let us see what will happen. So the dynamics is not defined in this fundamental tile. Tile here is a fundamental tile. You see that it's kind of ideal triangle. There are three vertices here, two, two of them merge in this point, and one of them here. It is, it is a still, again, a triangle. And on this triangle, dynamics is not defined, so it is the escaping, escaping uh, <coughs> triangle, uh, escaping tile. And so, of course, the orbits can, some orbits can escape through this tile, and then we can pull this tile back by these escaping orbits, and we will obtain some escaping set, which will be tiled 
by triangles, which will be tiled by triangles. On the other hand, there will be some non-escaping set of orbits that never escape through this fundamental task. And on this, on this non-escaping set, pictures showed that it should be some resemblance to anti-holomorphic dynamics, to dynamics of Z bus squared plus C. Mm -mm. So, and that is, that is ex ex exactly what was suggested by Lee and Makarov, and that's what we proved. Hmm? Tangency is anywhere. Yeah, tangency, uh, so yes, yeah, here is we, yeah, I should emphasize that we have here one par complex one parameter family of these guys. It is the center of this disk. So tangency, the, the only thing that is important is that there is only one tangency. So when the tangency on the negative line, real line there, then it's bad points that should be removed. But Hmm? Complex, complex parameter is the center. Well, it is two real parameters rather than one complex. So, but you take this disk, you take this disk, you put, pen, put center more or less every, anywhere. So this disk, and then you make it tangent to the cardioid. Yes, yes, yes. The cardioid, we fix the cardioid, fix the cardioid, but change the disk. And the only place where you can, don't want to put the disk is on the negative axis but because there will be two tangencies in this case. It is not good for us. Uh, um, one tangency is good. Mm -mm. You can't put that disk too close to the cusp, can you? Is there a, is there a well, we want it to be inscribed like that. So yes, it is some parameter region. So it is not everything. So it is some parameter region. Mm -mm. OK, and here is uh, so what the pictures suggest that actually, so there is a so we have this one parameter, one parameter family of dynamical systems, of anti-holomorphic dynamical systems, and we have connectedness locus. So it is uh, actually, it is unicritical family. There is only one critical point for this family. So we consider the non-escaping locus, and the picture suggested that there is a relation to the tricorn. So what is the tricorn? So all of us know So, yeah, so the dynamics is not defined in this fundamental tile, in between cardioid and the disk. It is where the dynamics is not defined because our dynamics is reflection. Now the quadrature domain is the interior of the cardioid, interior of the cardioid, and exterior of the disk. Okay, so to escape means to, means to go through this. Fundamental tile. Exactly, to enter this guy. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe I should draw some uh, dynamics, show you some dynamical pictures. Yeah, here is, so here is anti-basilica, Schwarz anti-basilica. So that is the set of non-escaping points, but we see only part, one half of it, which is inside of the cardio. There is another part which is, uh, which is inside of this exterior domain. So it is kind of, this is alpha fixed point where this part's touch. This is non-escaping set, and here you have the tiling set of escaping points that escape through our fundamental tile. Here is the fundamental tile. So they escape through this fundamental tile. So, this, so this escaping set is natural, you see, it's naturally tiled by triangles, by pullbacks of the fundamental triangle. Fundamental triangle. So it is basilica, basilica picture. Uh, uh, sorry, so I'm going wrong direction. Yeah, this is the dynamical picture. So what, is, what about parameter pictures? So that is the tricone picture. Well, that is the tricone. That is anti-holomorphic cousin of the Mandelbrot set. So all of us know Mandelbrot set, but it, is, it looks a little bit different. So, you know, it was, I think that the name was coined down in the pictures. First pictures were produced by Jack Milner. And then Hubbard and Dirk Schleicher started it, and then Sabe and Inu followed up. So there is some work not comparable with the work for the, in the Mandelbrot, for the Mandelbrot set, but there is a very interesting work about Tricon. And there are different features. Some features are the same. After all, the second iterate of our map is a holomorphic map. So, but the dependence on the parameter is not holomorphic still. And there is a very important feature which stares at our eyes. It is this main. So main domain, main, main, main triangle, main triangle where there is an attracting fixed point, it is replacement of the main cardioid. And so there are just three analytic arcs here, 
And so on this arc, the points are parabolic, and it is just the one deformation arc. So there is one deformation arc. This parabolic, parabolic parameter can be deformed quasi-conformally, but by changing so-called height of the critical point. There is some invariant associated to this, to this parabolic point called the height, and it is one real parameter. So that is very important, important feature which, which distinguishes distinguishes the tricon from the Mandelbrot set. There is defi definitely there are some, some non-trivial, non-unusual for us, so quasi-conformal deformation, and they just stare at our face. Is it still so enjoyable? So, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it is? It is the same detail? It is the main card, David. <laughs> OK, so I'm learning something here. <laughs> OK, so how to see? So just quick, uh, quick uh, uh, <clears throat> so idea so is how to see the relation to the, yes, so you see that here, yeah, I, maybe I, I did not show you the parameter plane for, yes, yeah, so that is the C and C family. The parameter plane, it starts here. So it is like it stretch starts here and stretches all the way there. It is like one uh, limp, one limp of this deltoid. So this of, of this uh, of this tricon. I mean, one limp of the tricon. So we just take one third of it, and so that is how this one third looks like, and. Here, the corresponding picture, so the corresponding picture turns out to be combinatorially equivalent, combinatorially equivalent to the picture of this limb. Uh, so, and that is a theorem. And uh, so you can guess that this kind of theorem can be, could be proved by using some kind of surgery, some kind of straightening, maybe not quasi-conformal, some more general straightening, but no, in this case, even the with surgery is not good enough for us. So it is purely combinatorial theorem. We relate these two pictures combinatorially, just identifying laminations on one side with laminations on the other side, and proving that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between, the corresponding geodesic, between these geodesic laminations using parameter tilings, using parameter tilings. So somehow to capture, to, to get realization theorem for the in this C and C family to justify that parameter with certain combinatorial can be realized, we are doing this through the parameter domain, somehow through this external rays. But external rays, literally, well, they may be not so well defined, but there are parameter tilings, it's parameter picture, and there are these parameter tilings by ideal triangles, they, they're visible in this picture. Combinatorics is well defined, and one can describe these tilings exactly in the way, in the classical way of the idea of Hubbard, as was discussed last time by, by Sean. Apparently, it is maybe not so easy in holomorphic setting, but in our setting, it is quite straightforward. Just parameter tilings are related to dynamical tilings through the position of the critical value in the dynamical tilings, literally like that. So, and then we have some sense of, some sense of external structure, external rays, and they allow us to capture capture the parameters with certain combinatorics. OK, that is as much as I want to say about this C and C family. So that is the first non-trivial family that we studied. And so there is this combinatorial relation between the connectedness locus for C and C family and the basilica, basilica tiling. And in particular, in particular, uh,
Yeah. So, yeah, okay. Yeah. Essentially, what uh, since it what Sabi is saying is that because of this non-rigidity, because there are these deformation spaces in the tricon, this deformation acts in the tricon. So just to, to get actual homeomorphism between parameter spaces is is very. Yes, exactly, exactly. Well, yeah. Local connectivity is violated, so there are issues here which fundamental. Probably it, we cannot go from full to, to actual homeomorphism in this situation. Probably it is impossible. Uh, uh, so, however, there is another, yeah, uh, well, let me uh, skip the main, well, just by product or part of this, of this discussion is that actually any anti-quadratic map can be mated with uh, more, any, any post-critically finite anti-quadratic. So if we restrict ourselves to, to the post-critically finite anti-quadratic maps, then there is one-to-one -one correspondence between these post-critically finite maps and the corresponding, the corresponding Schwarz reflection maps. We can do matings in one-to-one -one way using the David surgery with the ideas that I just described in the, uh, in the previous slides for deltoid. Uh, uh, so, <clears throat> yeah, so this uh, mating, mating theorem is, it is also, so this kind of theorem in the holomorphic setting was proved by, by Luna and, and Sean, and then in anti-holomorphic we have similar theorem. And we have also some addition that it is David Sjöger which can do this in the post-critically finite case. Uh, uh, okay, so there's another example. I will be very brief on this example. Uh, because Sabia will just give a next talk, which, is, which will be around this example, and it is very much related. It's a kind of anti-holomorphic counterpart of what Sean discussed last time, and what they are working, what Sean and Luna are working on. So <clears throat> it is family of quadrature domains related to the Chebyshev polynomial. So just take this polynomial, z, z cubed minus three z, and uh, just start to restrict it to, so it says it's one and negative one, it is the critical points for this polynomial, and restricts it all, all the disks for which, on which this polynomial is univalent, maximal disks on which this polynomial is univalent, like here. And in the image, you will obtain some kind of, some kind of cardioids, some kind of cardioids, and then, so it will be uh, associated, associated Schwarz, Schwarz reflection dynamics, and here how it will look like, so there will be degree two map from a smaller domain, double cardioid, onto the bigger domain, like that. You see that we are dealing here with some kind of pinched quadratic-like map. Pinched quadratic-like map. And so for this pinched quadratic-like map, we want to develop also a straightening theory, with some, some kind of straightening theory, and relate it to the, uh, to the uh, tricon, to the uh, anti-quadratic maps the bus squared plus c. And in this case, actually it is possible to do by means of quasi-conformal surgery. So, but not to the quadratic, I should be careful here, not to the quadratic, but to the parabolic first. So one can straighten these maps to parabolic maps by means of quasi-conformal surgery. And then one can do, go from, from parabolic to the actual anti-quadratic maps by the theorem by Karsten and Pascal, so which, which does this part of the surgery from parabolic to, from parabolic quadratics to just actual quadratics, polynomial quadratics. But this part, so let me make a little comment on, on this part, how to do straightening from, mm, from these pinched quadratic-like maps to the parabolic maps. It is a kind of the theme which was uh, the topic of Luna's thesis under Karsten's advice, and so she developed some theory of this kind of straightening for, par for parabolic-like maps. Very nice theory. It was nicely applied in the work with, uh, with Sean. Uh, however, uh, there is some shortcoming, some little shortcoming is related to the fact that Luna's maps are defined in the full neighborhood, as far as I can tell, defined in the full neighborhood of the parabolic, of the parabolic point. And here, our maps are not defined here in the neighborhood. The parabolic point is just this cusp, or the version of the parabolic point. So we needed to develop some surgery, some surgery which uh, covers this kind of situation and which nicely develops on the parameters. And that is, that is what we 
be did in our work. And that is what SABI will be talking about just in 15 minutes from now. So, but let me now skip all this topic altogether. So this kind of, this family of, of uh, Schwarz reflections for which there is a nice quasi-conformal surgery actually which pre pre performs straightening for us. Okay, there is this, all these nice pictures I have to skip. Yeah, but let me just mention that an, a nice way, nice way of doing it is related to the classical Warshavsky theorem, which controls the uniformization of the uh, so curvy line strips of the topological strips like that, uniformization by the straight strips. There is a classical theorem which gives asymptotics of this kind of maps in terms of the geometry of the strip. And so in simple situation, of course, it can be done by hands, but it is a kind of regular way of dealing with these kind of situations. And probably Sabe will mention this as well. That is parameter space. And so there is some generalization to, for Shabbat belly polynomials from Chebyshev polynomials. So we have Jacob Mazur here in the room. He hopefully will produce some, uh, some poster on this topic. Just you're welcome to look at this poster. And then there is a very general, actually, situation when this kind of surgery can be performed. And Sabi will tell you more about this. OK, so let me now skip this part, which will be topic of Sabi's talk. And let me go to another, another situation. So it is which looks a, lot of, a little different. So it is actual rational type situation rather than polynomial. So let us take a look at the classical, classical Apollonian gasket. So what is the classical Apollonian gasket? We uh, take four circles, so such that uh, these green circles on our picture, green circles uh, which uh, touch, so each of which uh, touch the three other circles. So you see how it's, it's in the picture. And then we just consider reflections in this circle and produce produce a Kleinian group generated by these reflections, limit set, etc. So it is, a, it is a classical situation. And so it turns out that this situation can be turned into the rational type situation. So, okay, so here is, yeah, let me, let me show you this. This is a picture of this gasket, of this uh, Apollonian gasket. Our circles where we, which we, over which we reflect are these ones and this one. And there are some dual circles, four dual circles that we see, which is a kind of partially invariant component. So it's kind of for two components for the Apollonian gasket. And we see that the action on this for two component, look here, you see the triangle tessellation here on this for two components. So clearly on the for two components, we again see our favorite triangle group. So now we are well equipped. When we see triangle group, we can immediately replace it with the map z bar squared on each, on each of these four, uh, four domains, so associated with the dual circles. And we obtain some uh, orientation reversing topological map of degree three from the sphere to itself. And so now we can uh, turn on Turn on, and, and this map will be critically fixed. Critically fixed, as it will have four fixed points in each of these invariant, invariant domains, invariant circles, as well as disks, as uh, we see on this picture. So we obtain some branch covering. We want to realize this branch covering as an anti rational map, and we can apply the anti holomorphic version of Thurston so to obtain a rational map. Here is a fig picture of this anti rational map with four fixed critical points, which are fixed under the dynamics. And you see that the map is hyperbolic. The map is hyperbolic. So again, there is no way this picture can be quasi-conformally equivalent to the Apollonian picture. So in the Apollonian picture, there are all these tangencies with, which are parabolic points. No way we can turn hyperbolic to parabolics with, uh, with quasi-conformal maps. But again, we can turn, we can turn on the David machinery and replace back, replace back on each of these domains. We can replace back the map z bar squared with the Nielsen map for a triangle group and get back the <clears throat> get back the classical Apollonian gasket from the rational map. So you see, so it is very nice, very nice situation which 
I think that maybe was not, had not been quite observed before that we have group and a map for which the Julia sets are naturally dynamically homeomorphic, not quasi conformally, but dynamically homeomorphic. So it's actually, actually uh, somehow the Julia set is topologically equivalent to the limit set of Kleinian group. And it also falls down into this framework of anti holomorphic dynamics and David surgery. Okay, I'm running out of time, so let me just mention that one can do this in somewhat different way, just producing somehow first some almost a fine model for the rational map on the tetrahedron, and then to show that the, our rational map is quasi conformally equivalent to this, to this model, while the Apollonian group, or rather it's Nielsen map for that Apollonian group, is David equivalent, David equivalent to that. That is, would be another approach which would allow us to construct in one shot both objects starting with the tetrahedron affine model, model. And one can produce some mixtures of these guys. One can do the surgery not everywhere, but say on three domains. You, you see the three domains where you see the action of the triangle group, but outside you don't do anything. You don't do anything, so it is still z bar squared action on the yellow region. And so you, you're getting real mating, like real mating between two dynamical systems, like group on the part of the dynamics. So, well, the, oh, I'm going wrong direction again. So the Apollonian group and the Apollonian map, anti-rational map, can be mated in this non-trivial way. So on, on part of the dynamical plan, it will be group action. On the part, it will be map action. And on the Julia set, they will share the, the, the common Julia set on this, on this single picture. OK, so I'm running out of time. So let me just briefly summarize what is on the next slides. Well, we have developed a very general, quite general theory of this um, David surgery. So just for the, it is uh, concerned with the circle maps. If you have expensive circle maps on once, and if you have two expensive circle maps, and uh, which are topologically conjugate, so that hyperbolic points go to parabolic points, may go to parabolic points, but not the other way around. Then this conjugacy would be David. So it would admit a David extension, again, using, using the Said's criterion. And in this, in this time, it is completely dynamical result, so not arithmetic. There is not enough arithmetic for us here. But it is dynamical result to show that actually there is a David extension. And there are then plenty of applications of these techniques to various situations. We can turn hyperbolic map to parabolic map, a la Hasinski. We can turn hyperbolic maps to kissing circle Kleinian groups, reflection Kleinian groups, and what I have just discussed with you. And again, we can produce some mixed pictures, Schwarz reflection pictures, which are matings of these creatures in various ways. So it's I think that there is no assumptions on the parabolics, no. I think I think that the generacy is okay, yeah. No, no, I think that no problem with the generacy. Mm -mm. Just the only problem is parabolic should not go to hyperbolic. That is the only uh, problem. I mean, I can, I don't have the calculation, but I can believe if that's important, then maybe a high degeneracy parabolic and a low degeneracy parabolic. No, it is high degeneracy is much soft, much softer effect, so it is, it is okay. It is, yeah, no. No, there, well, there is asymptotics. The generacy is, it is certain asymptotics, but it is compatible with the, with the David condition. Uh, 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 okay, uh, so a couple of applications to the problem of removability of certain sets. Removability means that any homeomorphism, you have some fract fractal set and on, the, on the sphere, and if you have a homeomorphism which is conformal outside of this fractal set, then it is conformal. So it is very popular among analysts' uh, properties, so there is, has been quite a bit of work to decide which sets of, are removable or not. In particular, for polynomials, well, this, so the Julia sets for polynomials are removable. So this Julia set, which is actually the Julia set, that is the example which was studied by Julia. So it is a cubic polynomial with 
<laughs> that is the Julia set. There are two fixed points. Maybe it is one, when we, it, it is actually, for two, did not produce any picture. So, so maybe it is the first picture of the Julia set in, the, in Julia's paper. So there are two fixed points here. So it is critically fixed situation that we love. And it can be turned through the David surgery to this group which is generated by reflections in these four circles, this necklace, necklace group. And for this Julia set, it is known that it is, uh, it is removable, but it was not known that this limit set for the Kleinian group is removable. And this was a particular question that Chris Bishop was interested in, so he was not able to answer this question. Now with this David surgery, we have an answer, a positive answer to this question, that this set is also removable because under the wheat maps, removable, removable creatures go to removable ones. And here is another nice creature. It is a Jordan curve. Jordan curve with two parabolic points. One is parabolic, with parabolic basin in this, in, inside of the, this pine tree. And the other one, parabolic basin, is this blue region. So outer and inner parabolic basin. So there are cusps pointed in both directions. And it is difficult for this situation, it was difficult to decide whether this set is removable or not, because there is this John condition, which was usually used to detect removability, and John condition allows cusps only on one side. So, but with our technology, we were able to recognize this set with cusps in both directions, it can be recognized as a removable set, this pine tree. Okay, so it is just some generalities about removability, some general results, I don't have time for them, but let me say that one can go pretty far from this example that I showed to you, one can generalize them to quite, quite sort of general result, results about anti-holomorphic anti maps, answers, answering questions by Bullitt and Penrose and in the anti-holomorphic setting, whether certain objects can be mated so at least giving some kind of answers to those classical questions. <clears throat> so, and as a general, general, in other general theory, re relating Julia sets of maps and groups, so I have to skip it now. Just let, that is a beautiful picture produced by Sabia of mating of some map inside and some group outside, so some necklace group outside, and the Julia set tuned by the Basilica inside. And let me finish with this citation from Fatou, classical citation, which is very, which is almost unknown because it was not published in a regular paper. It was, I think that it was his job report or his job project and he wrote it just maybe a few months before he passed away. And it uh, suggests that there is this deep deep analogy between rational maps and Kleinian groups. And it would be very interested, interesting to develop a general theory of algebraic substitutions. So, Bullet and Penrose are here, <laughs> so, which would unify these two objects in a single theory. So, that is Fatou, uh, who foresaw, who uh, sort of anticipated the Sullivan's Dictionary. <clears throat> okay, so, thank you. Thank you.